Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Juventus in both legs of the European Champions League first knockout round. Going to be very exciting and hopefully we get revenge for them beating us 4-2 earlier on in the season in the European Super Cup. Since you guys were last year, things have gone very, very well indeed. So I'm very happy with how things are looking at the moment and hopefully today we'll carry on some decent form and beat Juventus. Before we get into what's happened in between episodes though, would hugely appreciate it if you could drop a like on today's video for me, subscribe to the channel if new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. So since you guys were last here for yesterday's emergency episode where the new board came in and tried to sign two players, one of which ended up joining the club and we lost 1-0 to Valencia on his debut, we've done very, very well as you can see. We started off with a 4-2 victory over Levante in the Spanish Cup third round with new signing Juan Morelos scoring a goal in that game and actually he has been very good so we'll talk more about him in a moment's time. He picked up two more in a 3-2 victory over Elche and then got an assist in the game against Granada as well. So he had a great first few games for us actually. That first game against Valencia I guess was just him settling in and playing terribly. We then played the Spanish Cup fourth round. The thing special about that one before we took on Getafe and won 2-0 there which was really really good for us. Now going back to that Spanish Cup fourth round game we lost 6-0 to Atletico Madrid. If anything I was testing out the 4-2-4 formation against a big team in a game I didn't mind losing and it was a good job I didn't mind losing because we lost heavily in that game because we've got Juventus coming up normally we play a five at the back formation against them but I wanted to see if a 4-2-4 works well against a top club clearly it doesn't so we will not be using that formation against Juventus today following that win against Getafe of course we then beat Villarreal 2-0 as well before all three of our strikers Sione Gisk and Juan Morales scored goals against Real Zaragoza with Paolo Turner picking up the other two in a 5-1 victory what that means for the league table is that we currently sit fourth with 51 points on the board four points behind Atletico six points behind Real Madrid and a good eight points behind Valencia Two points behind us, though, are Barcelona, and they will probably catch us at some point because it's Barcelona. They're very, very good. So although we sit fourth right now, I don't expect us to sit there for much longer, if I'm honest with you. Uh, Real Valladolid and Levante are a bit too far behind. I can't see either of those teams catching us up. So I think we are in a top five group, but I think we are the worst of that top five. So fourth place might be a little bit ambitious this season. So unfortunately, new striker Juan Morales has just picked up an injury, so won't be playing in today's episode, I imagine, unless he does make a miraculous recovery in time for the second leg against Juventus. But if we look at his form, for example, uh, he's ended up playing uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. And in those eight games, he's scored four, got two assists. So six goal contributions is very good. And in those six goal contributions, that's the most of any player actually in the past few games. So he's done really well um, and contributed more goals than anyone else. So very happy with him. So as you can see, he's played every single game since he's joined the club, trying to really bed him into the squad quickly. And it's worked pretty well, I think, because he is scoring and assisting goals. So happy with him, but obviously he's injured for a few weeks right now. So Kenneth Gisk and Sione have got to reignite that partnership to get them both playing together again. Also, we are now in February, as you can see. Uh, no more players join the club, but a few young players have gone out on loan to second division clubs. Axel Carter, Arthur Ackland, Jeremy Finley, for example, they've all gone out on loan to second division clubs to get first team football, which is very important for them. We did have a very big bid come in on deadline day for Paolo Turner, uh, up to £44 million, I think it was, from Man City, which we rejected. He was not very happy that we rejected that bid and came to talk to me about it. I said, you're not going anywhere for anything less than your release fee clause of £80 million. And he he said, yeah, fair enough, I won't. So luckily we've got him until someone meets his release fee clause, which hopefully they won't. But enough rambling, it's time to get into today's first game of today's episode. And we're gonna play the five at the back system in the first leg at home against Juventus. So Crenta starts in goal with a back line of Lukau, Araya and Rubens. Varel and Rask in the CDM positions or the wing back CDM position, you know what I'm trying to say, uh, with Nowak and Catania just ahead of them. And then that deadly attacking trio from last season are reunited in Europe once again. Adrisa Ferdinand, Gisk and Sione lead the line. So as kickoff is upon us here today, we need to get revenge over Juventus. Of course, they beat us earlier on this season in the European Super Cup when we played them at a neutral venue. Hopefully the home crowd advantage today will give us a big lift and hopefully we can score quite a few goals against Juventus to try and give us a great advantage into the second leg. Now, in the comment section on yesterday's video, a few people seemed a little bit confused as we've just hit the post there as to why I turned down the centre midfielder. Um, one, at the time, I was not convinced that we wouldn't have to pay for him. Um, I wasn't sure if the board were going to pay for him or if 
um, someone else is going to pay for him, as in we had to pay for him. So that's part of the reason as to why I rejected him as Juventus score an early goal in this game and a crucial away goal as well. Secondly, I didn't think we needed him. Uh, we've got four or five really good centre midfielders with loads of potential. And yes, he would have come in and been right up there with them. But at 24 years old, he wasn't going to improve anymore. The guys we've already got at the club are younger than him and are better than him in terms of potential ability. So I'd rather play those guys and make sure that they develop nicely and not have someone being paid £63,000 to just sit on the bench most weeks. So that was my thinking on that one because we still have to pay the wages. Although the board ended up paying for the transfers, uh, we still have to pay the wages out of the club's wage bill. And £63,000 would make him the top earner at the club by a good £20,000 or so. So as we go 2-0 down against Juventus, it's a good job that uh, we didn't sign him because otherwise we would be ruining the money we'd be missing out on. If we don't get through the Champions League, right? I think we get £9 million for this round, but that's a, basically money's going to become an issue if we don't get Champions League football again. And I'm very concerned because we're not going to win the Champions League this season. Um, as you can see, Juventus are tearing a new one into us right now. So we're not going to win the Champions League this season. I really don't think we're going to. And I'm not very confident about qualifying from the league. So our best case scenario, I think, is Champions League football, obviously. But the most likely scenario for us, I think, is Europa League football again. So I don't want to go splurging too much on wages just yet. Because we're not guaranteed Champions League football next season. We're not an established top four side just yet. Even though we are right on the cusp of it. I don't think we're quite strong enough to actually be in there consistently. Into the second half though and things are not looking much better for us as Juventus look to score another goal here. Pedri with a quick free kick and it is turned into the back of the net and again it's a free kick that lets us down. We seem to be very weak defending from set pieces. I mean we've been a bit lucky there with some rebounds and stuff like that. Delict shot is rebounded into the path of the guy who scored the goal in the end so a little frustrating, right? But still, that back line is probably not quite strong enough. I think we have improved at the wing-back position with Varel and Rask and things like that. And Rubens came in this season to be really, really good. But maybe Lukau and Araya might just not quite be good enough to be Champions League winners and things like that. We might look to have to address that in the transfer window over summer. But we're getting to the point, right, where the team we've got is a quality team and... <sighs> There's not much more we can do to improve it, I don't think, you know, to make huge leaps forward. It's all going to be incremental improvements from here on out. But we lose 3-0 at home to Juventus there. They've got three away goals. We've got to win 4-0 at their place if we want to go through. And I don't think that's likely. So because there are three league games in between this one and the next Juventus game, I'm going to play these three league games off camera and I will see you in just a second's time for the second leg. Just need to unpause the recording right now because uh, China can still make bids for some of our players and uh, DL Pro from China have made a 34 million pound bid for Sione. Whoa. Now that's big, right? That's big. Um, again, I don't think we should be accepting this. I think we wait until that 52 million pound release fee clause is triggered. But it's getting towards that right now. It's getting towards it. And we can't say no to £52 million. Even, you know, how good Sione is, right? We can't say no to it. Particularly now that we have got, you know, someone else in the club who's as good as him, right? But they are willing to pay £21.5 million for David Perez. Now, this is non-negotiable. He's getting, he's kicking off on me right now, actually. Uh, literally, just a few moments ago. I've not got it on the recording. Uh, where is it? Um, this is no whack injury for six or seven months. Where was David Perez? He was, oh, there he is. Perez is not happy that he's not getting enough playing time, apparently. He's not very happy about that. So this could, you know, solve a big issue for us. He's the biggest earner at the club, I think, actually. And he's only played 17 games this season. And his game time is getting less frequent every single season, particularly now that we don't play with an attacking midfielder, because he did play there quite a bit last season. I think maybe that's something worth thinking about on the grounds that he's been here six months permanently. We got him on a free transfer, right? Not played brilliantly. He's not quite up to his old standards of 16 goals, 13 assists in a season, right? Maybe we do look to accept that. Maybe we do accept it, particularly with Juan Morales, who can play right wing as well, supposedly better than David Perez. It means Paolo Turner can play on the... I'll be honest. I think that's, that's an offer we have to maybe think about very seriously. David Perez. The thing is, we can't negotiate it. If we can negotiate it up a little bit, that would be great. I'm going to reject it now. 
David Perez transfer offer to clubs. Let's put it at like 30 million offer to clubs, see what they say. And they've come back in offering 17 point. Okay, so they've gone lower, but we can negotiate this one. How about 27? Suggest they say 19. How about 25? Su they've accepted 25, right? For David Perez, the man who we only brought in because really we didn't want to pay him that much money. He's a bench player. He started 10, got seven off the bench, as you can see there. Um, only made one appearance in the Cup. Not made a single appearance in the Champions League this season uh, on the grounds that we don't really use wingers in the Champions League, so he's a bit pointless there. I'll be honest, David Perez, we could do with £25 million. Accept it. Okay. That's big. I actually feel really sad about that. Because when he was on loan with us, he was absolutely incredible on loan. Since we signed him permanently, he's obviously not playing as many games and he's getting nowhere near the goals and assists that he used to get. He's on, he's the highest earner at the club, or maybe the second highest earner at the club. Wages, um, he's the second highest earner at the club now behind Juan Morales, but was highest by you know a long shot. And for a guy that's going to sit on the bench most of the time, that's not really great football or business sense, is it? Or maybe not, because he's rejected the contract. He's rejected the contract immediately, literally. We're talking two hours later, one hour, 59 minutes later, accepted the bid, he rejects the contract. Oh, David. So here we are back for the Juventus game. Obviously, 3-0 down is uh, not ideal. So we've got to win this game 4-0 away from home against Juventus if we want to go through. Something that hmm, I'm not sure is going to happen. So we'll wait and see if that does happen or not. But we did score five past Atletico Madrid in between episodes and four past Betis as well. I say in between episodes, in between the two games. Uh, we beat Betis 4-2, which was fantastic. We beat Atletico Madrid 5-2 before having a rather frustrating 1-1 draw with Espanyol, who are down near the relegation zone. So two teams doing very well this season. We thrashed them, the team near the relegation zone, as it always is, we end up nearly losing. What those results mean for the league table though is very good for us because Atletico Madrid, as you can see, have had a little bit of poor form. They've not won in their previous three games, which is fantastic for us. So we go ahead of them by two points. If we can get rid of this Atletico thing, please. There we go. Ahead of Atletico by two points. Ahead of Barcelona by three points. And we're now 11 points clear of Valladolid. So for me, we are definitely coming inside the top five. I still think we'll end up being fifth, right? But there's a good chance that we are now going to finish in the top four with a positive result against Atletico. So just keep winning games and we should get Champions League football again next season. In terms of the lineup for the game against Juventus, it's not changed massively with Krenta in goal, Lukao Areia and Rubens in that back line. Varel and Terziev in the wing back positions with Tyson Brown and Marat just ahead of them. Ferdinand keeps hold of his space in the attacking midfield. Sione stays as the advance forward, but actually... I'm going to change him to a complete forward on attack and I want Morelos to be the advanced forward on attack. I want to see how he plays as an advanced forward. He's played as a complete forward every single game we've played him. Time to see how he does as the advanced forward because actually his attributes of 17, 18, 17 and those sort of attribute areas are much more suited to being an advanced forward than a complete forward. So let's see how he does and hopefully he scores four goals as we thrash Juventus. So kickoff is upon us here today. Obviously our backs are against the wall for this one, but if we can come back and win the game, it would be the comeback of all comebacks as Sione gives us the first goal inside of two minutes. All right, the comeback is on, right? The comeback is on. Remember though, Juventus do have three away goals, so it's going to be really difficult uh, for us to actually combat that. But we've made a good start so far. If we can score a goal every two minutes, you know, we're on to a big win today. If only we could have done that at home, right? If only we could have done that in the home leg, and then we might be looking okay to maybe actually qualify. I'm still very much doubting our ability to score four pass Juventus with no reply away from home, particularly as they look to come forward right now on the ball as that Luis Fernando on the ball into Pedri, into Mendes, into Marine, into Marine who shoots, Terziev clears it, but only as far as other Juventus players. Oh dear me, the ball forward again is good, but Krenta is even better and collects the loose ball. Now, does the highlight continue? It looks like it's going to, as Krenta hoofs it up towards Sione, who can't win it. Delict wins it in the air instead. And it's Juventus coming straight back at us. 
and they've got a goal back themselves. The aim is to still score four goals, uh, but now we just need to make sure Juventus don't score a second goal, otherwise it starts to get very untenable because we have to score five goals then and so on and so forth. So it's going to get very tricky very quickly if they score another one, which they have done. Mm, okay, the early celebrations are over. We're not scoring another four goals, I don't think. Of course, Juventus are the current Champions League holders, so they are arguably the best team in Europe right now. So um, if we had beaten them, that would have been a great way for us to show ourselves in a great light. But I genuinely don't think we're capable of beating Juventus just yet because they are the best team in Europe. Another highlight, hopefully this time it's going to be for us as Araya on the ball out to Varel. Varel looking to come forward down that left-hand side of the pitch with a bit of pace. Puts it in towards uh, Morelos, but doesn't quite get it into him, unfortunately. And we lose possession again. And once again, Juventus can come straight towards us to try and score a goal in this game. As Enciso on the side of the pitch gets it back to Yossiul into some other guy that I can't pronounce. I'm probably getting all these names wrong, right? As uh, it goes back out to Yossiul into Encino or Enciso, whatever he's called. And all right, game over. Finish the episode here. There's no point doing anything else, is there? We're just not good enough yet. Just not good enough yet. The key word being yet, all right? We will be one day, just not yet. It's a humbling experience. After we had it all our own way last season in Europe, absolutely dominating teams in the Europa League, when we're actually in the big leagues in the Champions League, we're the ones getting absolutely embarrassed. We've had a 7-1 loss to Man United in the Champions League this season, uh, a 6-1 loss in aggregate to Juventus as it stands right now, and I predict it's only going to get worse it nearly got worse. It nearly got worse. We're going in the right direction though, right? We're going in the right direction. If we can secure a top four finish in the league this season, that would be superb. And that gets us automatic qualification back into the Champions League again. So as long as we can just stay in the Champions League for the next few seasons, we are going to improve and we are going to get better. And we will one day win a Champions League, but it might be for another few years yet as, right, it really is over now. We've got to score six goals. We've, we've conceded four in 30 minutes. It's only 30 minutes on the clock. Come on then, Juve. Make it five. Put us out of our misery, please. I just want to walk away from this game. You know, it's not much fun when you lose 4-0 or 4-1. 5-1 in 36 minutes. Oh, you... Oh. Where's that meme of like, stop, he's already dead. We're already dead on the floor and they just keep stabbing us and stabbing us. We're already dead. What's the point? Why are you still stabbing us? <sighs> So yeah, not an ideal first half, conceding 23 sh I don't know how we've conceded 23 shots. Like, where? I don't understand. This formation is usually solid, and yet 23 shots in one half. Where's it all gone wrong? I, I don't understand. But there's no point in being here. I, we, we can't, there's no possible way of us turning this around now. So it was, there's no point in me being here for the second half. Oh, it's depressing, isn't it? <laughs> I've just been sat in my bed for 10 minutes thinking the game will be finished by now. Um, it's not. Sione is injured. But what I have just noticed, why does it always happen? As soon as I decide to give up and get away, the chair, the chair does everything for us. Uh, Sione is injured, which obviously is not great. So Kenneth Gisk on you come instead. Um, but do we have like a fighting chance now of actually like doing some good here? Potentially. Let's, let's confirm the subs, right? Confirm the subs. Who, sco who scored for us then? Oh, well, I say that. We don't. We've got to score another five goals. We've got to score another five goals in 30 minutes. Um, I'll be honest with you, though. I don't think the ch I, I don't think I can do any better than the chair. So, the chair, the, the stage is yours. Go for it, lads. I'm trusting you. See, I think I glitched it. I think I glitched the whole chair magic thing by coming back too early. Um, so apologies, but Varel and Sione scoring in the same minute. Uh, that's an interesting one to look at in editing. I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy watching that in editing, definitely. So out of the Champions League, obviously that's not ideal for us, but um, 
realistically, I didn't think anyone expected us to do that well in the Champions League this season. And if anything, it shows that we do have a long journey to go. But at least we weren't the only ones being absolutely battered. I mean, Porto lost 8-4, Inter lost 5-1, Huesca lost 5-0, Leipzig lost 5-1. So we weren't the only team to be... Well, we kind of were, weren't we? How bad is Sione's injury then? Uh, 9 to 11 days. That's not too bad. That should be all right for him. So obviously that means that uh, Gisk and uh, Morales will play as striking partners for, together for a little while. Uh, obviously we've been given £8.68 million pounds for that, which is fantastic. So back to £73 million pounds in the bank balance, which is lovely. Projection-wise, come the end of the season is £66 million. Pounds, so very happy with that. Um, and projected transfer budget is £18 million. Pounds. We could do with more money than that. I'm sure they'll give us a bit more money than that. Uh, but we should see a big boost in transfer budget and wage budget for next season with this sort of money in the bank, I reckon. So obviously, uh, not really ideal for us there. I think next episode, though, we push forward towards the final episode of this season, which again will be a double header with Real Madrid and Barcelona. We always seem to have those two teams next to each other for whatever reason, playing at the same time. Uh, so we'll probably, depending on the context, right, uh, we might just do Real Madrid and Barcelona if we need to do severe, we might do severe as well. If it's getting a bit tight at the top, I'm not quite sure. But uh, next episode will be the last one of this season. So thank you so much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on today's video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.